This is an absolute stunning bouquet. And I am so happy with the final result. It is absolutely stunning. Look at it. It is so pretty. The colors and to think that I was going to buy a pre-made bouquet that was old and raggedy. Absolute insanity. Oh. Because we should never oh. want for ourselves oh. what exclusively I'm belongs show to this God. In the sun. Because that. So I just came from Trader Joe's and I was in the flower section. So I had picked out like four different flowers to do like a fall flower arrangement. I get in line and I'm like, you know what? I don't really know how this is going to turn out. Let me put these back and just get it pre-made. Okay. So I go to the aisle. I start, I pick, I pick out a bouquet and I start putting out, putting back the flowers that I picked out for my arrangement. And there was an older black lady there and she was like, oh my goodness, that's such a beautiful plant. Why are you putting it back? And I said, well, you know, I just decided to go with the pre-made arrangement. And she was like, oh, honey. Um, so I had asked, you know, do you want this plant? Because I'm not going to get it. You know, maybe I'll try this arrangement next week. And she was like, um, I forgot verbatim what she said, but she was like, girl, that's a really good bouquet. Like have confidence in the flowers you picked out. She was like, that would have been a beautiful arrangement. So after talking to her, I was like, you know what? She was like, uh, did you just give up? You just gave up like that? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, you know what? Let me put the pre-made bouquet back and get my pieces again. So one of the flowers I got was sunflower. So I picked these back up and I had got this plant. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it has like a burgundy tint, like a dark plum color to it. It's, it's a really pretty, very, very pretty. And then I had got baby's breath and another kind of flower. So she was like, instead of baby breath for a filler, you can get one of these flowers. So she had pointed out these. And so when I had went to pick out my flowers again, I got these instead of the other one I got. And then also as a filler, I got these. And so, you know, she again, she complimented my arrangement and she taught me, you know, the secret to bouquets is you get a round, a pointy and a filler. Never heard that before. So I was like, oh, and then she also gave me the tip um, to make the flowers last longer at like a capful of vodka. So she said that the alcohol will turn into sugar and that is what the plants love and so i asked her about the bleach thing because i've heard on tiktok like oh you can do bleach and she was like yeah that works too but the bleach doesn't have the sugar and the plants really like the sugar but also she said alcohol is a antibacterial so she said alcohol gets both of the jobs done at once it's the antimicrobial or antibacterial and it's also the sugar. So I had to come on here and share that with you all. And then you guys are gonna see me put my bouquet together. Um, this is all very new to me. So when I do my own arrangements, I just do what I feel and I hope for the best. So I don't have any more like uh, tips and tricks or things that I follow when I do my bouquets. But I'm very excited to put this together. And I was so grateful and thankful for her wisdom. And we even talked about flower markets. So amazing lady. I hope I run into her again. Or maybe she was an angel. I don't know. But her advice was very helpful. So is the Greek word for good news or gospel. All right. And it is the word from which we get our English word evangelize. All right. And so he comes back to Timothy with good news, with a good report about what God has done 
in the life of these Thessalonian believers. All right? It was with them the discipling efforts that he had. God is the one who ultimately gets the glory for what was going on in the lives of these believers. All right? In 3 John, verse 4, John writes words that probably capture the sentiments of Paul also. And John writes, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Yeah, I was talking with a friend of mine um, the other day, and God blessed him many years ago to plant a church in Savannah, Georgia. And uh, after some years, after the church was stable and solid, the Lord led him to depart from that church. Fast forward several years later, a couple of decades later, actually, and um, he got a report from one of his family members about some great things that were going on in the city. At this particular love for them, he was inspired all the more to continue to thank God for them and to continue to pray for them. But he also was encouraged that his labor was not in vain. All right. And so Paul prays much because he loves much. Yeah. And I know many of you all love people in your lives, but let me ask you, has your love become the propulsion in your prayers for you to passionately petition God on their behalf? If you love them, you ought to pray as we proceed in this study. That you ought to, is that Paul keeps subtly giving praise where praise is due. He gives praise to God. All right? Verse number nine. But if it weren't for God's initiation, then there would be no transformation. Mm. Did you get that? All right? So we've got to make sure that as we're praying passionately for other people, that we see God working in their lives, that we give praise where praise is due. Paul has the heart of a true pastor. And if you are a pastor that happened to tune in to our Bible study today, let me encourage you, sister or brother, love God's people. Love God's people. Love God's people people it's hard to resist true love i'm telling you love god's people don't just serve god's people love god's people i've heard pastors say all kinds of twisted uh things inside uh comments about that congregate the lord jesus christ and so it's our responsibility to not just prepare people for earth. We've got to prepare people for eternity. We've got to make sure that we prepare them not only for time now, but we've got to prepare them for life everlasting later. Glory to God. All right. So to sum up, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 10, the explicit link here is... Paul's passion for people that was birthed out of his love for worshipped Paul. I forgot. And Paul never sought the word in heaven, your mind and on your heart. Um, and that's what's happening to me today. I don't know what, what all the Holy Spirit is doing, but I believe that he's at work. And so I trust him. So whatever this is, it smells like maple syrup. Am I tripping? Yeah, it kind of smells like maple syrup and it has a very um, interesting texture, like a brush, but a very, like a soft brush. I like these. So yeah, as you see, I finished and then I forgot that I had these. So I think I'm gonna let these kind of like poke out at the top. Yeah. Absolute stunning bouquet and I am so happy with the final result it is absolutely stunning look at that it is so pretty the colors and to think that I was going to buy a pre-made bouquet that was old and raggedy Absolute insanity.